friends, Leslie from A Friend in It with. Welcome to episode 50. I can't believe I've done this 50 times of A Friend in It with podcast. Today is February 7th. It's a Wednesday and it is a gorgeous day here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Absolutely wonderful. As a matter of fact, the groundhog is giving us a prediction of an early spring. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Give me more of those cold, overcast, gray days. I am one that likes them. So, uh, yeah, we want to wear our knits, right? So, it is beautiful. And if you have stumbled across or upon this channel, it is a channel mostly about knitting. So, if you like to knit as much as I do, then you're in the right spot. Um, I just love talking and listening and just immersing myself in all of the projects and yarn. So if you're like me, then you're in the right spot. Uh, so I am going to talk a little bit about what's off my needles. I do have quite a bit and what's on my needles. And I, at the very end of the podcast, I am hosting a knit along with Margaret from Bo Valeris and Gina from Skin Cocaine, and it should be really fun. So stay tuned till the end, and I want to tell you all about that and show you the yarn that I'm going to use, and maybe you will want to join along. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun prizes because those girls, they know how to dye. They know how to dye some yarn. So anyhow, um, all right, what I'm wearing. When we were in Germany this winter, I went to the most fabulous yarn shop and met my friend Silky and it was really fun. Gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. And my husband just was fondling this scarf and he said, could you make this for me? He just loved how the colors changed. And I was like, absolutely. And he thought it was a little too rough for his baby fine skin. So he chose a cashmere, this Lang Cashmere Light, which is not 100%. It is 88% cashmere and 12% nylon. And it is really light and fluffy and airy and very yummy. So that's what we did. And he chose four colors because the pattern had four colors. But in the end, we decided on only three because I guess I had more yardage and each color is pretty long. So it hangs, I think it's so cool, just long like this. He will probably just double it um, and he can tie it like that. And I still have my mark marker in here because I wanted to mention that you must keep track of which ones, which side's the right side and which side's the wrong side. And yes, this was my way of doing it. So I just continually moved it along. It has, they gave me this little printout, which since then they have written it up in English and it is on Ravelry. But uh, I just, it was in German, and so I went to Google Translate, and I just typed all of that in and wrote down what it said. And hopefully I did the I-cord the right way, but the I-cord was different on the right side and the wrong side, so I couldn't, I couldn't remember if I was on the right side or the wrong side all the time, so I had this little marker here. I'm just going to leave it in there and see if my husband will notice. Um, maybe he'll like that little design feature. He wants me to put on one of my little friend-to-friend -friend, uh, little leather tags. I don't have any here, but I'm going to sew a little tag on there for him. And I have blocked it. It did bloom nicely. Um, I The way they had it tied, um, so let's see. They went like this, so they just wrapped it around their neck and pulled this part through and then 
grabbed the other tail and pulled it through and tied it like that. So you want to see that again? Maybe not, but I, I'll show it to you just in case. So, you know, it's just super long and just put it your neck that way, bring it around and then pull this one down, stick your arm through and grab one side and make a loop and then put your th other hand through the loop and grab the other tail and bring that through. And it kind of makes this like pretzel. There's as much thicker yarn. Uh, I used a US 11, which is, is that a nine? Eight millimeter. Uh, and they, um, I believe used a 13. They had a much bulkier yarn, but this was exactly what my husband wanted. And I do love the color change, the block uh, colors. And yes, I'm pretty sure he will just wrap it and tie it like that. Because he likes it like that. But yeah, love, love, love this scarf. The change of color and in this yummy yarn. So I didn't use the fourth color, so I have two balls left of this. And I don't know, I think I might have to make another pair of toast mitts. I mentioned that my girlfriend Kim had made me a pair of toast mitts in uh, that yarn and they are so dreamy. They're in a, one of these gray colors. I think they're in this dark gray. And I would love them in black too. So anyhow, this is the Perle Shawl scarf. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. And they have written it up in English, like I said. So I will pop that below. And... Uh, that was so great of them. So thank you, friends, over at La Lane Yarn Shop in Germany for making that pattern available in English. Um, I'll be interested to see. I'm going to compare if I did the I-cord the same way. So anyhow, had this off my needles finally because I did start it. It was his birthday present and it wasn't ready, but I wrapped it up with, that, with the needles on it. He was fine. Uh, then I made the Sunday socks. Uh, if you've been around here for a while, you know I'm not a huge sock knitter. Just a little too much fiddliness, I guess. And yeah, it's just, they're just little. But I really enjoyed working on these. These were out of a worsted weight yarn. I used Quince & Co. in Owl that I had in my stash from a leftover from a sweater. And it is, uh, there were 120 yards on here. I took two balls of that, but it's 50% American wool and 50% alpaca. And they match the sweater. And when I came home, I made these when I was away in Lake Tahoe. And when I came home, Libby was actually wearing the sweater when I was unpacking my suitcase. And I was like, I think you need these socks. So these are for Libby now. And she is so happy, but they're really just a great home sock because they're thick and cozy and wooly. And yeah, I have mentioned before, I just don't like wearing um, hand-knit socks with shoes. I can wear the, them around the house, but once I put on a shoe, there's just too much pressure on the bottom of my foot, which Gina from Skay Cocaine in her last episode talked about you need to use a size zero needle. It has to be super duper fine. So maybe that's the case. Maybe I have only done them on twos and threes and that might just not have been, um, you know, a small enough gauge. So if I ever decide to make needles on US, zeros just don't see that in my future but maybe just maybe maybe i might or i need a pair of cashmere socks i can make a chunky pair out of that <gasps> um but yes i feel like i do have princess feet that can feel the stitches and flipping them inside out is another option that a lot of people said 
where the purl side, where the knit side next to your foot and the purl side underneath. That's an option too. So maybe in the future, we shall see. Okay, so they, this is the Sunday Socks pattern by Petite Knits. I think I made them in three days. So fast, so fun. Just, you know, and a very wearable knit to me afterwards. Um, and then you can get back to your sweaters or your other projects. So those are the Sunday Socks. I think that was a five needle. I think I used a US five. Did I remember that one? Mm -hmm. 3.75, I haven't memorized that. It's a 3.75 millimeter needle. All right, so the last episode, I introduced you guys to the Warm Friend Hot Water, hot water Bottle Cover. And so many wonderful uh, words about that. So thank you so much, very kind comments. And I wanted to tell you just a few things because a lot of people asked, how I actually use it, and how much yarn they actually needed. So what I like to do is take my good old fashioned trusty kitchen scale. And if you don't use your kitchen scale for your knitting, then you might need to invest in a little scale. Um, they're not very expensive. And I do have an Amazon store and I have everything linked below. And that'll be over there. But I take just the yarn that you have, you know, whatever yarn it is. I have some here and me here because I do have one on my needles, but you want to get to 80. So just take all of your scraps and put them on your scale. Just till you, and then you'll know you have enough grams. So you want 80 grams. It's actually 78, but just to be safe, Although this is a six inch top, you know, if you uh, if you didn't have enough, you could only do three and you wouldn't have a little turtleneck effect going on, but that would be fine too. But that's how you can measure to make sure you have enough yarn left in your stash. It's just by weighing it on your kitchen scale. And the other thing is how to get them, how to get the bottle into the, um, cover. So this is a bottle that, you know, you can purchase anywhere really. And you just fold it like this and go ahead and stuff it in. And you're not going to hurt anything. It's easy to wash your cover, take on and off. And that's pretty much as easy as it can be. It is very easy to do. There are a lot of guidelines on how to use your hot water bottle. So make sure you follow those. You don't want to put boiling water in here. You, you know, you want to make sure that your hot water bottle is not very old, but you definitely don't want boiling water in your hot water bottle. It puts pressure on your seams of your bottle and just makes it dangerous. And, you know, there needs to be something invented for pouring it in. So what I do is I have an electric teapot and I turn that on and then I let that sit for, you know, probably 10 minutes before I pour it in. It's still very hot water and it would probably burn somebody if it, um, if it hit your hand. But I just, you know, put it in the sink like this and then just slowly, very slowly pour in the water. And that's it. And then how I use it is if it's really cold in our house, I will put it under a blanket before I sit on the couch or anything. And if it is uh, really cold in our bedrooms, I stick it in the bed well before I get in the bed. And then it's nice and toasty warm. I saw something on Instagram that in Austria, they call it Lufta, Lufa, where they open the windows in the bedroom and they warm the bed with hot water bottles for their children and themselves. And then 
when they go to bed, the air is cold and their bed is warm. And I love sleeping with my window open in the winter. So that feels amazing. So you can also do that. But this was one I used just a bunch of scraps for um, in my stash. And I got online and I just Googled stripe pattern. There is a random generator that stripes things for you. You can do that. But, you know, you can just free for all, just knit until you run out and then add whatever. It doesn't really matter, but about 78 grams to 80 grams and you can um, have a warm friend in your bed. So that's how I use it. I hope that helps. I hope that answered any questions for you guys. Um, and yeah, I hope you're loving yours, giving them as gifts. They make really great gifts. All right. Oh, this is a finished object. It's not mine, but there's a sneak peek. Um, all right, let me tell you what else is. Uh, I guess I'm, these are also on the needles, but Valentine's Day is coming up, and you know how I love a good scrubby. Uh, so I found this. This was like a free pattern on Ravelry and like the popular and... I, you know, I have a lot of scrubby yarn. So this uses scrubby yarn and the dish cloth yarn. Is it red hot? I don't even know because it's super old on a comb that I have. When I just make straight square dish cloths, I love those too. And uh, I just used double point needles only because. But this is a free pattern. They are really fun to make. I am sure I will be giving them to my friends. They take me about, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. And yeah, they're super fun. They're a very good on the go little project to have. Um, and then you can give them away for Valentine's Day. Uh, okay, so those are all my finished knits, I think. I think they're all my finished knits. All right. Now, this, isn't this fabulous? Uh, last week, I had two amazing friends over. Susie Korb, she owns Pittsburgh Mercantile. That's her business, if you've ever been on that website. Absolutely, perfectly curated shop. She just chooses, really, she has really fabulous taste, and so does her sister, Debbie. And they are both knitters, and they came over to knit, and Debbie had made this. It is Natasha Hornsby's from Moonstrike Knits hat called Quince, I believe. Hold on, I did write it down. No, Quinn. It's called Quinn. And it is oh, such a cute pattern, and it is made out of nye dk from pearl soho and she used harbor blue quince blossom which is that fun really fun melon neon melon and then warm cognac which is truly my color so i told debbie if i could choose a neon that sings to my heart it would definitely be a melon color it's not pink, it's not orange, it's melon. So here we go. And I have to tell you about my skin in a minute, but here we go. Isn't it the cutest thing you ever saw? And with a camel coat, oh, so cute. So I love that. I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, yeah, it's just absolutely fabulous. Loved everything about it. Um, so thank you so much, Debbie. I will treasure that forever. Okay, so before I move on, I want to tell you about my skin because, oh dear, I am using five Flora Oracel. Um, I know some of you probably have heard of it because it's a pretty popular treatment for pre-cancer spots on your skin. And a couple years ago, I had something frozen off on my forehead and 
it went away for a while, but then it just came back and it's just a really rough patch. So I went to the dermatologist and yes, they recommended this treatment. So it's a two week treatment. I am on day five and no, I'm on day six. And I am just starting to feel that like sunburn feel. It's not gonna be pretty. It takes, it brings out all of the spots that were potential skin cancer areas. And yeah, they fluff off and, but your whole skin, I feel like I'm hot and sunburned right now. So that would be interesting. And yeah, I'm not going to, well, it's only, it's like two weeks of really terrible skin. And I only podcast every like three to four weeks. So probably would have missed it anyhow, but that's, that's what's going to be going on with my face. Uh, and yeah, just kind of a reminder to just get your skin checked. Don't forget to get your skin checked and wear your sunscreen. My little PSA. Um, all right. So I'll go into what is on my needles. Now, quickly, I'm going to show you this is because so many people ask, and I so appreciate the ask. This is a vest that I am writing up the pattern slowly but surely. You guys are so great. It is a very simple pattern. It's going to be called Hello Friend. I made this one in December. have worn it. Libby has borrowed it. That's always like a like a star on my forehead when she wants to borrow something. So this is called a Hello Friend, and I've been working on that quite a bit. Writing as I go, grading is another story, but I'm working on it, and I am making out it out of Unling number one, which this yarn is just pure deliciousness. It has a little bit of Angora in it. So it's wool and Angora and it just, mm, it just feels amazing. So that is really what has taken some time. And this is my um, part of a cow that I was not hosting, but I was you know, knitting along with, and I just had a bit of a, that's the back with the back of the neck. I had a bit of a hiccup. I told you guys before, and I ripped it out to here. I had already separated for the sleeves, and then I realized that I forgot to add the, these cables along the raglan. Uh, so it would have just been plain and would have been okay. I can, I, I actually kept knitting for a while considering my options and thinking, well, maybe I'll just, you know, it can just be solid stockinette here. And then I was like, no, no, no. So I ripped it back and yes, this is where I am. I had... I ripped all the way down to the neckline because I also, it was probably a godsend because I also had forgotten. No, I didn't forget. I, I wanted to omit the short rows. And then I figured, because I wasn't truly that crazy about this deep and I was trying to sew down the collar as I went by knitting it together. And that was why I, I was having an issue. So anyhow, I just didn't sew it down yet. I will sew it down later. And now I quite like the back of the neck that way. Um, and yeah, that's all I have. But it is just beautiful and very nice to work with. I am using Knitting for Olive, which I... I had never used before. This is my first time and I absolutely love it. I do see what all the hype is about. I'm using their Merino and their Silk Mohair and these are both in Cognac, uh, Dark Cognac and Soft Cognac. 
and they are just making this simply beautiful uh yeah color i love that so anyhow i am really gonna get going on this <laughs> i have a just a pretty big issue like with the talking and you know focusing on other people while I'm doing it. So that's usually alone, but I'm getting a lot better. And this is the cable needle that I like so much. Um, it's just the hook. You, it just, it works beautifully. So I know a lot of people like the straight one, but if you're, you know, in the market for a cable needle, I definitely highly recommend just this hook one. So, that's what I'm using for that. Okay, so, but since that requires, you know, my attention, I decided to go ahead. I have mentioned this before. It's design number 22. It's Nordic Knits number two, this natural slipover. I don't have a color photo, but that is it. It's just a very simple yet beautiful, I love the argyle sort of look to this, but it's just in the texture form. And I am using their yarn. I bought this also at Lane in Germany, and it's the Natural Alpaca Pella. And I am using the recommended needle, which is a, hold on. It's a US 6, which is a, what is that again? I know, I, I shouldn't have looked. I should have just tested myself. That's a four millimeter. Uh, so anyhow, this is all I've done there. But this is going to be one that I can actually, um, well, so far the rib is perfect for talking and knitting. And uh, it is five inches of rib. So kind of tedious, but love it because I can also be engaged in a conversation while I'm doing that. All right, so that's on my needles, those two things. And then of course I have a friend of friend on the needles that I have to do the jogless stripes. So I wanted to remind you if you're making friend of friend or doing any sort of stripes, when you are ribbing. So this has a side seam of a pearl row running up for a rib. I mean, for a seam, it's just sort of a faux seam and gives it a little more structure. And when you are changing color, if you can remember to knit the entire row when you're ribbing, just knit it like on the water bottle so this, I was knitting, I mean, I was ribbing on this side because this is the right side. And if this were the right side, the whole thing were the right side, then I would have just knit this row when I changed color. But I purled this row on this side because if you can see on the inside, there is not a seam, it just is it just seamlessly goes to the next color. So you don't sort of have those pearl, I'll have to show you sometime, but it, there's like a pearl underneath in the other color, and it's not just a nice line of a new color. So that, when I change colors, when I am on the front of friend, that one stitch that's usually purled, when you're changing the color, just knit that stitch. And then you won't have a funny side seam. It'll just still be a stripe down there. Uh, and then I do the jockless stripes also, um, which I might film a video. You could, there's plenty to look up, but I'm gonna show my friend Kim how to do it. And Kristen, how to do it. I'm showing you, Kristen. And uh, maybe I'll just film it and put it on YouTube too case you're interested. But that's a friend of friend, that's Peacoat and Salt. And yeah, 
That one I think I'm gonna keep for me. I've been wanting a navy and white one for the spring. I think it'll be so cute. It's just some jeans and white t-shirt or a white blouse. Yeah, little sneakers. Uh, so anyhow, that is, I think those are the only things that only, that's a lot for me. That's a whole, whole lot. I have to finish my best and I am going to really devote time to Violetta and then I can cast on for these. All right. Have you seen the party bow? Oh my goodness. It is a pattern by Andrea Roth Vedita. Absolutely. So much fun. That's a picture of it. Andrea in her party bow. And yeah, I think it is just super fun. It just happens to be my birthday next month. And so I figured every birthday girl needs to be wearing a party bow, right? And um, I had some of this in my stash. This is Big Birdie and Peanut. And I'm going to pair it with Birdie and Meow. And that is what she used in the pattern. So it was, I was very lucky that I had this in my stash and yes. So as soon as I make some, finish something, the vest or the friend friend or something, I'm gonna cast on for the party bill. I cannot wait. It looked so cute. It would be darling in a bright color if I wore them, but I think that camel will be beautiful as well. So anyhow, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, my friend. <laughs> okay. I was gifted this from my very sweet friend, Candace, and it is Newton in all its glory. I am so excited to try this out, Candace. Thank you so, so much. Look at those beautiful colors. That is a really great depiction of what that yarn actually looks like. I can't believe it picked up, but there's like a tiny bit of pink and just blended though. It's not like, um, you know, speckled. It just, blends very nicely. So I am going to look for a pattern, not until I get some of these other things. And she gave me some, Candace gave me some really great advice on how to use this. So if you have any e either, I know our friend um, Rhonda over on Lily Knitter. She also was looking, I couldn't give any advice, but she's looking for advice because it kept breaking on her. So if anyone has any advice in the comments and I can be sure to share that or we can, you know, you can just look below to see if you're knitting on that. I also don't know exactly what pattern. I know I should pair this with something to give it some stability. Um, but yeah. I am so excited. Everyone raves over that yarn and I have my hands on some now. So thank you so much, Candace. I'm so excited about it. Uh, okay, now the moment, the knit along that's happening. It's gonna happen. It's March 1st till May 1st. So you'll have two months and it is the Dartmoor, Dartmoor pullover Dartmoor sweater by Kadri and I have loved that sweater for a while and when we were at Cake Palooza this fall um, Jan from Forever Yarns in Doylestown was wearing one and it was so cute now she did not put the sleeves on so I probably will not either well I know I won't well I think I could probably get more of this yarn and I think it might be undyed, so that would be okay. But I loved what how she was wearing it. It's just a big oversized vest, really, is what it looked like, a slipover, kind of like the um, 
the one I showed you, but it doesn't have any texture. It's a perfect conversation. Have a conversation and knit uh, project. So this is what I bought at Cake Palooza. It was the Wensley Worsted by La Vienna May. And mm, of course, I just love that color. And then I am going to hold the, what is this one called? I know it has a name. Hmm. I think it's Kumo. I think that's what this is. And everyone's raved about this too. It's Surrey and Silk. And, oh! So this is just going to be a little popover, super cute, dark more without the sleeves. So if you are interested in joining us, we would love it. There will be more details later. Uh, I don't know if I will be on right when it starts because we'll be out of town. Um, but I do know we're using the hashtag dart along, D-A-R-T along, so that for the Dartmoor sweater. And you can follow anyone and look at, you know, what there's having to say about it. We are going to start a Ravelry group, which I'm going to work on, I promise. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You know those girls are fun and you know they'll have some fun giveaways. Um, I'm going to give away some things too, but mine will not be my hand-dyed yarn because I don't have any hand-dyed yarn because I don't dye any yarn. Oh, I should have told you more about the pattern, uh, what size needle, but it's a fast knit. I do know. Hold on. Let me look it up quickly. Okay, so I'm glad I looked it up because there's a Dartmoor sweater and then there's a Dartmoor V and... I'm sure they'll agree, but any Dartmoor of Kadri's, uh, because she has the Dartmoor sweater V. They are both done on US 9s, which is amazing. We will have these sweaters in two months for sure. And yes, they use a lace and a bulky to give a bulky. The gauge is 15 stitches and 24 rows to four inches. And the sizes are extra small up to a 5XL. So there's a little for anybody that wants to do it, a V-neck or a crew neck, a vest version of either. The V-neck would be so great as a vest. Also, this as a vest uh, or both as, as sweaters. But they are both by Kadri, because I also see there's one for, by Martin Story, which is very cute. And there's a Dartmoor vest by Annie. These are Kadri's Dartmoors. Okay, just those two. So anyhow, hopefully you'll be able to join us. Day around in your stash. Maybe you have something. And yes, it will be fun. So I hope that you guys are knitting away and I hope obviously that you love what you're making. And if you don't, you know, don't do it. I will be back soon. And if anyone has any questions on the Flora, Flora Aura Cell that I'm using, feel free to ask. I try really hard to answer the comments. Uh, I get buried some days if I don't. Uh, answer every day. So I totally apologize. I see them. I appreciate them. And I will probably still at some point make my way back to them. So, but in the meantime, yes, keep knitting and I will see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Bye.